autism. It's a word that parents often want to avoid hearing at all costs. It's sometimes described as feeling like their child that once was has been lost. This is what I often hear from families when I tell them that their child is on the autism spectrum. I hear the stress and the strain and the confusion and the angst. I hear the anxiety and fear of what will be for their child's future. I usually tell this news to parents of very young children, two years and even younger. These are valid feelings that should not be dismissed or repressed. They should not be told to hide their feelings or not feel this way, because they do feel this way. And that's because there's often a severe misunderstanding of what autism is. Autism in and of itself is not something to be feared or feel shame about. It's a neurobiological difference which impacts the way an individual sees the world, navigates the world and experiences the world. Autistic people engage in social and communication behaviours differently to non-autistic people. They may have sensory aversions to, for example, bright lights or loud sounds, or sensory interests such as feeling things in between their fingers. They may also have very focused interests that may or may not impact learning other skills. All these interests can be used as assets in the workplace that aligns with these interests and accommodates the needs of neurodivergent people. About one in every 50 people are on the autism spectrum. These individuals are your family, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbours or yourself. Although autism is diagnosed more frequently in boys than girls, with one girl diagnosed for every three to four boys, we still don't know if this discrepancy is in fact this large, as autistic girls and, with, and women often slip through the cracks and are misdiagnosed with other conditions or not diagnosed until much later in life or not diagnosed at all. Studies have found that later diagnosed girls and women may camouflage or mask their autism behaviours, which can lead to mental health issues as adolescents and as adults. However, what we do know so far is that the early signs of autism in infants and toddlers are largely the same in girls as they are in boys, as children of this age have not yet learned the often harmful ability to mask their autism behaviours. Just think of any toddler, autistic or not, having a tantrum on the shopping centre floor. There's certainly no awareness of societal expectations there. Those in the helping professions, such as myself, don't aim for a cure of autism. Autism is a brain difference, a neurodivergence, that must be understood, accepted and embraced by society. However, autism can significantly impact the developmental outcomes of children and and adults if left unsupported, particularly if that person has co-occurring disabilities. So how can we help autistic people to live happy and healthy lives? Firstly, let's create a world that's better built for them. Just as we install ramps for wheelchair users, let's take into account many autistic people's sensory sensitivities and need for structure and predictability when designing our public spaces. Secondly, to prevent further difficulties and mental health problems that often arise without early supports for autistic people, we need to act early. We know that early detection and diagnosis, leading to early supports and services, maximises children's developmental outcomes as it capitalises on the plasticity of the young developing brain. More importantly, it allows parents and professionals to learn as early as possible a child's preferred communication style and how they can match that style to help them learn essential everyday skills and communication. It also provides space for the family to talk about autism with their child so that early in life that child is able to understand and even feel pride in their autistic identity and not view it through a negative lens. Early detection and diagnosis can also significantly reduce parental and family stress as parents are aware that their child is in fact developing differently to what they typically expect and begin seeking services to help them understand their child better and to help their child thrive. Importantly, 
parents are aware that it's not anything that they are doing that is causing their child to be different. Autism is a neurobiological difference that is highly heritable. And so heritable, in fact, that children with an autistic parent or sibling are nine times more likely to be autistic. A child's diagnosis often helps parents to understand themselves better and even seek out their own autism diagnosis. So what are the early signs of autism in infants and toddlers? We know through the literature and my own research at La Trobe over the past 17 years that the early signs of autism fall mainly in the social attention and communication realm. These are an absence, difference or inconsistency of behaviours like eye contact, pointing, gestures and pretend play. So an autistic child may use fewer gestures or be less likely to respond to their name. And although there are repetitive and sensory behaviours in infants and toddlers, these can be subtle and extremely varied between children. So they are not considered good predictors of an autism diagnosis in very young children. Despite knowing the early signs, until recently, there have been no screening tools that are effective enough to uh, use for universal autism screening. Too many non-autistic children are detected at high likelihood for autism, or too many children on the spectrum are missed. We therefore have to move away from a screening model of autism, where children are seen at one time point in development using solely parental questionnaires, and towards a developmental surveillance model, where children are regularly monitored by professionals for the early signs of autism and work in collaboration with parents to address any concerns. I have conducted two large-scale developmental surveillance studies for autism, monitoring over 30,000 children using a tool I developed called Social Attention and Communication Surveillance, or SACS. It has many strengths, including the ability to monitor children's social communication development from infancy all the way to preschool. We have recently published our research in JAMA, showing that it is the most successful early autism identification method in the world. Of the 13,000 children monitored in the latest study, 83% identified at high likelihood between 11 to 30 months went on to receive an autism diagnosis. By preschool age, we identified 96% of all children on the autism spectrum. This is a great outcome, as currently less than 20% of autistic children are identified and diagnosed by two years, and less than 2% by two years of age. The professionals using the tool, such as maternal and child health nurses and GPs, report that it has improved their practice and greatly increased their knowledge of the early signs. The training also helped them to have difficult conversations with parents in an empathic and informative way. Hundreds of thousands of children worldwide have been monitored using the SACS, including Australia and 11 other countries, such as Nepal and Bangladesh, showing its applicability in extremely diverse settings and ease of scalability. To further increase accessibility, we've developed a free parent-led mobile app called AS Detect, with English, Spanish and Mandarin versions available. It uses videos to demonstrate the behaviours being monitored and reminds parents to continue monitoring their child's development. Ultimately, I want to transform the way we identify and diagnose children on the spectrum to establish a model that incorporates repeated monitoring of children for autism by professionals and parents and have an efficient, seamless referral pathway to early supports and services such as the early childhood approach in the NDIS. We all, need, we all need to help remove the wait and see approach that is so pervasive in our healthcare sector and increase awareness about the early signs of autism by educating the public, parents and professionals. We can diagnose autism early. By doing so, we will increase acceptance of autism and understanding that autism is along the spectrum of the human condition. By detecting children with additional needs early, and providing timely supports, we're providing our children the best opportunity to thrive, regardless of their neurological makeup. Thank you.